coming up. The Washington Capitals cruise through their best regular season in franchise history. Alex Simmons sets it. Ovechkin fires, he scores! Winning the team's first President's Trophy and emerging as the leading contender to win the Stanley Cup. But the playoff opener didn't go as scripted. Placanitz has a three on two developing. He fires and scores! Tomas Placanitz wins it for Montreal. And with two games looming in Montreal, the Caps need a win tonight. Live from the Comcast Sportsnet Studios, this is Geico Sports Night. Kunitz and Garen on here. Penguins win the draw. Center point to Latang. Shot score! It was the Mekin in! Chris Latang shot the puck. The Penguins have won in overtime. And ladies and gentlemen, Elvis has left the building. New York Rangers, game one of the Eastern Conference quarterfinal. Mark Stahl plays it high, he didn't get it clear. Arnett to the front, Seven scores! An absolute rocket from Alex Seven. His drought is over, Washington wins. It's game two of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Greed fires its block, backside, score! Jason Arnett! The Caps will take a two nothing lead in the quarterfinal series. It has been determined that the official time clock read zero, 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 no goal. More jostling, along comes Dubinsky, pulls right out in front, popped it in, and the Rangers will win it. The chant is, can you hear us? Carlson, one time, score! Working against the cheers of Let's Go Rangers. Shamara fires, dribbles to the doorstep, it's loose, score! Jason Shamara wins it! The Caps will come home with a chance to clinch! Away to center, Ovechkin has some space down the right side, here comes Ovechkin, a backhander, score! Hansen centering feed, wrist shot, score! The Capitals will knock off the Rangers. 3-1 for the game and win the series in five games as the Capitals advance, winning it four games to one and now move on to the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. It's like stepping into the Steel City, where only Steeler fans are allowed. When you come in here for the first time, you think you're right back in Pittsburgh all over again. There's a lot of camaraderie amongst everybody. When you're here, you're with not just friends, but family. This is here every week. This is not, I mean, the core people that you're seeing, we're here every week. It's not, we're just coming out because
miss her in the playoffs. I love it. This is my family away from home. I always call my father for each game and say, okay, I'm going with the other family now to watch the game. It's so warm and comforting. I love it. This feels like home. When you're originally from Pittsburgh and you feel this at home, and Ravens are talking about all this electricity in the city, we feel that all the time, all year long. And this bar has become so popular, some fans actually left Pittsburgh where the AFC Championship game was being played to watch the game in enemy territory. How does this compare with an experience in Pittsburgh by right? Steelers Bar? Um, I'm sorry, I think this is the best I've seen. Really? I'm serious. They know how to hoot and holler. Do you think you'd ever see a Ravens bar in Pittsburgh? Oh, absolutely not. No, they, they, that would probably get booed out of town pretty fast. So, uh, And I was pretty scared to come into enemy territory, but it's been really great. I have to say it's been a lot of fun. What's even more surprising about this place is the owner. Joe First, who's a diehard Ravens fan, still turns his bar into a Steelers haven every game day. About five years ago, the Steelers group came to me and said, you know, would you consider having us as a fan club? I said, sure, why not? It's all about the cash register. Joe is fantastic. I mean, he's, he's in it for the money, don't get me wrong, but he's also a great person. He gives us whatever we want. The Ravens and Steelers can work together in harmony. Um... Not really. Uh, this guy makes it work in harmony. But as you notice, we are a Steeler only bar. What happens if a Ravens fan comes in? Well, because we're Steeler fans, we actually welcome everyone. But we like to discourage anyone who doesn't wear the black and gold because we all believe black and gold. But first isn't a total traitor. Just next door, his true allegiance shows. You can't leave the bar closed, and the Ravens didn't want to join us, so we put the Ravens in the store, as you can see, and we put the uh, Steelers in the bar. So whoever said Ravens and Steelers can't be friends never met Joe first. I love Joe, so it's okay. It's okay because I know he's a true Steelers fan at heart. Then again, the love only goes so far. With the first selection, 2004 NHL entry draft, the Washington Capitals are pleased to select Alexander Ovechkin. On behalf of Mario Lemieux and the entire ownership group, Pittsburgh Penguins select from Ramuski in the Quebec Major Junior League, Sidney Crosby. Drafted just a year apart, they were hailed as saviors even before they hit the ice. The NHL was coming off a lockout. The promotional campaign commenced almost immediately. Hi, I'd like to order some food. How many people in the room? Just me. <coughs> Three pizza. Four chicken fingers. Two meatloaf dinner. Dude, I got the balloon. Hey, go. oh. Six large french fries. I need some sausage. Go. 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 Five lobsters. Lots of ketchup. Chicken corn dogs. <laughs> My name, Sidney Crosby. On the ice, they've lived up to the hype. Individually, they've each been named MVP, and the highlights speak for themselves. Ovechkin storming in. Alexander Ovechkin curl and drag to the back end. He scores! Simply sensational! Recky down the wing to Crosby in front. He scores! Their contemporaries and adversaries, familiarity breeding contempt. That's what I expect from him. You ever think he crosses the line? I don't like it personally, but uh, that's him. And uh, you know, like her longer, that's what he does. I think they have utter contempt for each other. <laughs> I, I think yeah. I think Sidney Crosby's the the Nova Scotia Canadian farm boy who can't stand the fact that this guy is pumping his fist and and disrespecting all the old school purists of hockey. And Ovechkin's thinking to myself, uh, himself like, hey, hey, Sid, take a chill pill, enjoy the game a little bit, you know. <laughs> One of them will indeed enjoy this game seven. The other will surely see it through a different prism. The NHL wins either way. And with both Alexander Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby on the ice, the present and future of the league appears to be secure for sure. Game seven tonight, the fans 
have supported this Capitals team all season, rocking the red. And Ovi trying to get the Cavs to the conference finals for the first time in 11 seasons. Gets the first scoring chance, but Mark Andre Fleury with the flashy glove save keeps the game scoreless. Later in the first, after a penalty on Sean Morrison, Surya Gonchar with the shot. Sidney Crosby camping out front, puts on the loose puck. 1-0 Pittsburgh. On the ensuing faceoff, Ryan Poppier gives it away. Counterattack for the pinch. Craig Adams beats Semyon Varlamov five hole. Two goals in just eight seconds. 2-0 Penguins. Less than two minutes later, pins with a 2-1-1 break. Miroslav Shatan robbed by Varlamov, keeping the Capitals in the game, but not for long. Second period, the Penguins just sucked the life out of the phone booth. Bill Guerin makes it 3-0 just 28 seconds into the period. Less than two minutes later, Chris Letang takes the pass from Evgeny Malkin, blasts the shot into the top corner of the net. It is 4-0 Penguins. And that would be it for the rookie Varlamov, who gives up four goals on only 18 shots. He is replaced by the veteran Jose Theodore. About nine minutes later, Jordan Stahl puts away any thoughts of a comeback for Washington. It is 5-0 Penguins. Bruce Boudreau takes a timeout and then rips his team on the bench while the fans at Verizon Center simply in shock. After the game, Ovechkin and Gonchar make amends. An ugly way to end the season as the Capitals bow out to the Pens 6-2.